Okay, you guys, so we're going to go and start on our guide for our discrete random variables, and we're going to start off with a general scenario. So here we go, we've got Pam is looking to invest some of her hard-earned money, and she's found a classic investment that she knows is pretty safe, but a friend showed her a startup that possibly has a huge return. The following provides the probabilities of return for the respective investments and help Pam determine where to put her money. Okay, so we've got this for a classic and we've got this for a startup. And if you notice that this is giving us the probabilities of like each of these specific outcomes. So we can go ahead and let's go ahead and make a classic. And I'm going to go down a little ways and I'm going to make a startup. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of the members of the support and then we'll put in the probabilities of success. So remember little x represents our possible outcomes. For the classic we could possibly lose $2,000, we could make $2,000, or we could make $7,000. And the startup on the other hand there's a possibility to lose $13,000, to lose $3,000, but you could also make $57,000 thousand dollars. Okay, and one thing, like sometimes we like commas uh, to separate our numbers, sometimes we don't. I think I'm going to include them, so I'm just going to select this data, and I think if I click here, it'll put in, so this one, it puts it in parentheses, this is kind of an accounting uh, version. I don't think I want an accounting, I think I do want it in currency instead, and now we've got our dollar symbols, I've got some commas just to kind of help us out. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is put in our probability mass functions. So for this first one, we know that it's going to equal 3 divided by 10. The second one, it's going to equal 1 divided by 2. And this last one, it's going to be equal to 1 divided by 5. And if we look at the CDF, there's an equation that we can use, and it's actually the same one that we used way back in our frequency tables. So what we can do is we can just do something like this. We can say equals sum, and we are going to click on this first guy, do a colon, and click on the first one again. And it's going to look something like this. It's going to say sum from B2 to B2. And we're just going to lock one of those cells, and we can lock it by either pushing F4, uh, like if you have a PC or like on my Mac, I just typed in these dollar signs in front of the B and in front of the 2. So I'm going to lock this cell right here and then I can just drag it down. So I'll click enter and when I drag this guy down, it hopefully should do a cumulative sum. And it just kind of adds up all the way down. And we know that we have a valid PMF because the last value in our CDF is equal to 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that for our startup as well. So for the startup, it's three-fifths for losing 13,000. It is one-third for losing 3,000, and it's one-fifteenth for making $57,000. And if I do this same thing again, do this summation, and I click on this guy, do a colon, click on it again, and just lock one. So the first time I locked this first value, this time I'll lock the second one. It doesn't matter which one you do, you just need to lock one of them. And as I drag down, I notice that I get all the way to one at the very, very bottom. Okay, so now that we have got our probability tables set up, there are, uh, we can start answering our questions. And I think I'm gonna give us just a little bit more space here. Okay. And let's go ahead and scroll down. So it says use tables and graphics to help out with these scenarios. So we're just going to use our tables. If we really wanted to, we could plot the PMF and we could plot the CDF. Uh, that would be totally possible to do. Uh, but here it says, what is the expected payout of the classic investment? Okay, so here we want the expected value of our classic investment. And remember, to do that, we need to do an extra column, which is the support, multiplied by its associated probability of success. So we want to do that all the way down. And the nice thing in Excel, this is super easy. We're just going to hit equals. I'm going to take my classic. Remember, that's our support, x, multiplied by the PMF, which is the probability 
of the specific member of the support actually occurring. And so I can hit enter and instead of, I could type it out and keep doing it, but if I just drag it down, note, if I double click on here, it automatically has picked this guy up, which is exactly what we want. And so I can say that this guy equals, remember we want the sum of this entire column in order to get our expected value. And I've got an expected value of $1,800. So I could just copy this guy and I'm gonna paste it right there. There we go, 1800. Or, uh, I don't know, it's probably not gonna like the units on it. So I'm just going to kind of knock those down and just put 1800. Okay, perfect. The next question, what return are you most likely to see from the classic investment? All right, this is actually a really easy, um, a really easy problem. All it's saying, it's like, okay, look at all of the possible outcomes that we have and which one is most likely to happen. And here we see that the highest probability of an event occurring is 50%, which is right here at the 2000. So we are most likely to walk away with $2,000. Okay, next one down. What is the expected value of the startup investment? Okay, so all we gotta do is this exact same thing again. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna copy the top part right here, paste it, and then I'll just do equals the sum Oh, nope, not the sum, sorry. We'll do that later. This is the support multiplied by its associated probability of success. And we can hit enter, and we can drag this guy all the way down. And so here we can say that the expected value is equal to the sum of this column. And we have it as negative 5,000. Okay, so the next question is very similar uh, to this guy up here and it says, which investment option are you most likely to lose money? All right, so in the classic option, we see that we have a 30% chance of losing money here. And down here, we see that the startup, we have a 93% chance of losing money because both of these guys are considered losing money. And so, both of those together are our probability of losing money. So that's from the startup. Now, also remember this expected value, notice how it's not a possible outcome from when we actually did, you know, went and invested our money and we got a return back. This would be if we invested our money in this particular, I don't know, portfolio or whatever, over and over and over and over again. If we did this repeatedly and took the average, on average, this first one, we make 1800 and on the bottom on average we lose 5000 okay next question so it says suppose we have just invested in the startup scenario and your account uh, and your account manager just told you that you have lost money what is the probability that you have only lost $3000 okay so for the $3000 this one actually isn't too bad all we have to do is we're looking at the startup and this is a given statement. So remember, this is the probability of A given B equals the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. So we just need to figure out what A intersect is. Probability of A intersect B. And we need to figure out what the probability of B is. Okay, and for ours, it's what is the probability of getting negative 3,000 given that we have lost money. Okay, so let's start off with the probability of B. We'll just say that this is the probability of having lost money. And this is just going to be equal to the sum of the, all the probabilities of where we lose money. And so there's, B is just a 93% chance that we've lost money. Now the probability that we have both lost money and have lost $3,000 is this intersection right here. It's this one third value that we get. All right, so now that we've got A intersect B and we've got the probability of B, we can calculate out this probability. 
where it's just A intersect B divided by the probability of B. And we get that there is a uh, pretty much a 36% chance that we have lost only $3,000 given that we have in fact lost money. Okay, so we could just go ahead and put that in. I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Okay, and the last one says, suppose we have invested in the classic scenario. Okay, looking up here at the classic. And what's the probability of not losing money? So here, it's gonna be the probability of losing money, but complement of that. Right, so we lose money and take the complement. Well, that's pretty easy. We only have one here where we lose money, so we can do one minus this probability of losing money, and that's going to give us a value of 0.7. And we can go ahead and check our answers and make sure that we actually got them all. And indeed, we have. So we can kind of go through and see that, hey, we can use our different probability statements, intersections, unions, uh, conditionals, and they still work with these given probability situations. Now, the one thing that we didn't cover was how to calculate out the variance. And let's just go ahead and do that real quick uh, because it's something that is often asked. So remember, if we want the variance, it's going to be x minus uh, mu times the probability of success. And so remember that mu is just the expected value. So what we can do is say equals <clears throat> our x value minus the expected value. And oh, I forgot a square. Hold on. We need to square this guy. Squared. And then multiply that by the probability of success. And I'm also going to lock this mu because the mu doesn't change and we'll drag it down and it'll leave this mu selected right there. So I'm gonna hit enter and we get this, this huge value. And one thing that's actually not done correctly here is this should be dollars squared. So I think I'm actually gonna take off uh, the dollar symbol right there. Oh, let's see if I can get rid of it. Maybe I can't. Ah, there we go. Okay, so got rid of my dollar symbol uh, because this should be dollar squared. Anyhow, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this down and I'll make sure that in fact, everything is still done. Yep, A minus mu squared multiplied by the probability. That looks good. Let's look at this one. Yep, we've got our uh, member of the support minus the mu squared and multiplied by the probability of success. Great. And so we can say that the variance is equal to the sum of these guys. And notice how we're like in the millions and it should be something like that. Like we are really spread out. And so when we uh, square the distance, like it's gonna get huge. And then we can go down to like the standard deviation. And remember that the standard deviation is just equal to the square root of the variance, and you can just calculate, you can just type it out as equals SQRT parenthesis, click on your variance, and now we've got a standard deviation of $3,000. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that over here as well. So I'll copy this variance equation, and I'm just gonna move this guy down one. And so let's do the variance of X, and let's do the standard deviation of x. All right, so to calculate out our variance, again, it's going to be the support, oops, probably need some parentheses, the support minus the mean, and remember, I am going to lock the mean, and we're going to square it, and we're going to multiply it by the associated probability of success, and just hit enter, and it's huge, and that's okay. It's okay if these numbers are really, really big. These should be bigger than the other ones. We're way more spread out here. So if I were to just grab this little corner, oops, let me scroll over, grab that corner and drag down. 
we see that we have a very large variance, which is okay. And then we can just equal the sum of this column. It gives me the variance. And then I can take the square root of that in order to find our standard deviation. And once again, this should be dollar squared. So I'm just going to try to take off that dollar symbol. Okay, so there we go. We now know how to uh, kind of go through this whole scenario, do probability statements, figuring out expected values, figuring out variances, figuring out standard deviations. This is kind of top to bottom how we can uh, take a general situation and determine um, these different probabilities. So hopefully that helps out uh, with the rest of your homeworks.